sitting across from my desk here today is a gentleman here that most people know as the uh, high school teacher and coach, Joe Forgetta. Welcome, Joe, to the program. Thanks. Thanks for having me today. Appreciate so uh, as I told you coming in, as I tell all my guests, it's simply a conversation with us. If we go off the rails, Paul can always digitally cut it up to whatever we need to. Um, you're one of the few guys that was not born and raised in the area, Joe, and you were born, I know, up in the UP, and tell us about where you were born and raised. All right, so I was actually born, most people don't know, Mount Clemens, Michigan. Um, okay. At Self, my, my dad was in the Air Force, so he was stationed at Selfridge at the time when I was born, and uh, we spent some years, he was in the Pentagon, and then here, and finally ended up back in the great UP, which is where he was born. Um, so, and he was born and raised. So I did spend a lot of time in the great UP, but in my early years, uh, it was hit and miss with where we were at for, for a few years there. But the majority of my time was in the great UP. Um, I graduated high school. You want me to go into all that? Well, or no, tell just, me what city in the UP? Um, in the UP, we were at Gwynn, okay. Gwynn High School. My dad's from Iron River. Explain where Gwynn is. For Gwynn is in, in the middle of the, of the UP, uh, 22 miles southeast of Marquette. Most okay. people know Marquette, yep, so yep. it's pretty much centralized. And my dad was stationed at K.I. Sawyer Air Force Base, um, which is now the uh, Marquette um, Internet, whatever, airport. Okay. So that's been converted into that. So, uh, But I went to Gwynn High School. You want me to go into that? Yeah, how, thing? how many people do you think were in your high school when you went to high school? Well, we were class double B. At the time, so with the air f air base, you know, more populated area at the time. Sure. Um, since then, the air base is closed. They're now like a C or D school, okay, but so decent size. Oh yeah, we were we had about 800 in the high school. Okay. You know, so I mean, even though people think the UP is small, I mean, you know, when you have air force base that contributes to all those people, then sure. Then, yeah. So it was it was good size. How about siblings? Uh, I have two sisters, one older, one younger. Um, they have since moved out of the great UP, and uh, one's in, in Florida, one's in Wyoming. Um, so any of, the, any of the Forgetto family still in the UP? Yeah, my parents still live. They live on the 50-yard line of Gwynn High School. Okay. So in my backyard of my parents' house is our <laughs> the 50-yard line of the high school I played on. So anytime I visit, we'll, we'll go and walk the track or okay. hang out there. So you my still get back there once family. a summer or something like yeah, that? Yeah, summer or, you know... Um, a Christmas break or a Thanksgiving type thing. So we, we try to make it there at least once a year to see my parents and that. Okay. So. so you went to Gwynn High School. Did yep. you play sports? Yep. So um, I, I played football. Uh, I played basketball my freshman, sophomore year, and then I lifted after that. And then um, actually back then in the spring was tennis. Um, so I played tennis, a four-year tennis player, and, um, you know, so I, that's what I did when I was in high school. So. Now, as an adult, do you find yourself playing tennis any longer? No. Or just no time? No. Okay. No. Any of your kids play tennis? Uh, no. We've, okay. I mean, we've played a little bit, but not, not really. Okay. No. So would you, now, as a UP kid growing up, was it the thought to go to Northern, you know, Northern Michigan University? Um, well, going back to that, first of all, with tennis, I would have played baseball, but we did not have high school baseball. Okay. So when I entered high school, I actually didn't have the option of playing baseball. Otherwise, I, I would have played that because I enjoyed that sport. Would but that have been because of the short springs or the late? Yeah, morning? I mean, even the tennis courts, we'd have to snowball the courts and in March, April. And yeah, so I mean, it was it was tough. And then you know, to get baseball fields to to melt and thaw and all that stuff, they just not many high schools actually had high school baseball. Okay. Do they now? I. I, I would have to look, but okay. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think they did. So. Well, think about our springs right. and how difficult yeah. like your track season Correct. is. Yeah. And what is it, 400 miles up north right. or whatever it might be? So yeah. I'm guessing it might not fall till June 1st. Yeah, so I mean, like I said, I, I would have loved, I loved baseball, but I just I didn't could, in couldn't it. continue. Okay. You know, we just didn't have the option. Yeah. We had no option of it. So. Okay. So growing up there, um, you know, you know, Northern and, and Tech are your two main options of colleges, um, and and I wanted to go to Northern um, because it was close. My dad said, "You're not going to Northern." He didn't. He did not even give me that option, and and I appreciate him doing that because you know, it'd been like you know, community college, and you're just hanging out, and you can go home. It's 30 minutes away, type thing. So, and I loved math, so I knew when he pushed me to go to Michigan Tech, I was. They're going to go to Michigan Tech or Alma. I went okay. on a visit to Alma um, also, but um, I decided that Michigan Tech with, with their math and, and science and stuff was probably the best way to go for me. 
Okay. So I ended up going there and, and um, was a preferred walk-on for football. Um, my head coach was Bernie Anderson and a phenomenal guy. Uh, and, and really, um, you know, I, I played there for five years. And, um, you know, it was, it was tough. You know, Division II football is not easy. I'm a 5'10", 5'10 and a half, 250-pound guy. Um, wasn't easy. You know, in my first two years, I played D-line, which, again, my size wasn't very conducive to that. So finally, um, I got a scholarship my third year, and I traveled, and they moved me to offensive guard, which allowed me to get a nice, thick playbook and use my mind. So okay. that was fun. I got to pull and trap and be a guard and do all those great things. And um, I'd actually like to go back to, in high school, um, if we're talking football, Buck Nystrom, is a guy that I don't know if a lot of people know he passed away last year, but his, his love and passion for offensive line is where I started to develop that. Um, I went to camps with him at Northern. He, he's, for those that don't know, he played at Michigan State. Okay. Um, he was on their um, championship team and all that stuff and uh, went to Northern and coached there and stuff. And, and, and just, he was a great guy. And his love and passion for football and offensive line is where um, I really started to say, hey, I like this. I wasn't the fastest guy. I, wasn't, I didn't have the best hands, but, you know, I, I, I could hit somebody and, and, and make a difference and block and do all those great things. And was he a high school coach at Quinn? He was not, actually. Okay. He um, just kind of did camps and really wasn't a coach anywhere. He just okay. kind of helped out many coaches. Um, I think he started to coach a little bit more after I graduated and stuff, but just a great guy that helped out any, any team that he could. And, and, and um, you know, I just had a love and passion for the game. And okay. that, I, I got that from him. And, and that, was, that was a good starting point for me because he was great. great How guy, interesting, so. though, I look at it and I say, you came from a guy like that that, that pulled that out of you yeah. from the aspect of the passion for the offensive lineman, yeah. which doesn't happen too much. No. And then secondly, you get paired with a guy in Rain City, Michigan, who's another right. offensive line genius, right? right? And, and, that's, and that's, you know, the, the, the love and passion of that position is not, you know, that's not a glory position. Right. A lot of people don't like it. And, um, you know, and, and, and to be with those guys. And, and then after I graduated college, I actually went to uh, Croswell, Lexington, and another guy, Steve Vincent, which he's not a very known guy, but he also helped with that passion and development. You know, you play college football doesn't mean you can coach it. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I had to have some guys to, to guide and lead me along the way. But to ultimately end up at Marine City with Coach Bob, it's just I, I've been lucky to have a lot of great people in my life that have guided me and helped me yeah, to develop do, those things. mentors. Correct. Sure. So you go to college. Yep. You graduate from college with a math degree. So a, a math major, general science minor. Um, Played five years of, of football and, and started looking for jobs. And, uh, you know, growing up in the UP as much as I did, it was, I'm staying here. You know, that's where my family was, my friends. And there were no teaching jobs. So um, I looked in Wisconsin. I looked in, in Minnesota and, and downstate here. And um, uh, luckily ended up at Croswell, Lexington. And I don't know if anybody knows Kevin Mon, but Kevin mm -hmm. Mon was in my interview committee. And he, he saw my love and passion for teaching in sports and, and said, I want this guy on our staff. He was a big pull to get me in. And, and so, Kevin, I owe a lot to Kevin with, with getting your first job. You know, your first job is sure. not easy. So we can blame Kevin. if Yeah, you know, if something goes wrong, Kevin. Um, but but uh, so Kevin Mon helped me out to get there. He was a JV football coach there, science teacher. Um, so I started there. We were there for three years. Um, and growing up in the area, then I started to hear about Marine City and how great of a program it is. It's, it's you know, the best in the area and this and that. And, and um, Croswell Lexington's football program, we were doing really well. And then, you know, the administration just didn't have the support. Um, and so I'm like, I, I want to get to the best school. So luckily a job opened at Marine City. And after three years at Croswell Lexington, I've been here for, for 22. So. so that tells around the year 2000, somewhere in there. Yep, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, my last year was 2000, 2001. Sure. So then my first year was 2001, 2002. And you sort of plopped yourself right in the middle there with Coach Bob. Yep, so Tony I just, I was, yeah. I was a volunteer assistant, yep. um, attended every practice, worked hard, um, and, and the, the knowledge was way, worth way more than any monetary amount oh, sure. that I could have had. I worked with him on the O-line, I, I learned um, uh, how to set things up, 
the, 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 you know, the attention to detail. Um, everything that Bob did, I, I took notes on, I paid attention to, and, and, and I learned everything, not everything, but, but yeah. a lot of the structure of practices and, and, and the commitment to, to doing the little details and, and the time and effort and the commitment and, and the passion and um, you know, putting all that was in from, from Bob and then all, everybody from there. And then you took o then you basically took over the JV program a couple years later. Yeah, I, I don't know exact, but I'm guessing around 2007, somewhere around there. Um, after a few guys come and gone uh, along the way, I took over as the, the JV head coach and and didn't want to at first. Uh, I don't like change, uh, but you know it was the way for me to grow and develop, learn play calling, have ownership of a team. Sure. Um, and 15 years later, it's the best decision I made, you know, with, with the help, the development of the program. I stay connected with the junior football, with the eighth grade, and, and, and I try to bridge that with, with uh, the development with the varsity and trying to, you know, help, help set the pace of, of where things need structurally, of where things should be learned, and, and a nice progression, and try to, try to help that along with, you know, learning from the varsity, but, but establishing the basics at the lower levels. Sure. And, and I, what I've yeah. noticed, I've even said to you in the past, um, a lot of people don't realize it, but generally speaking, the, the best five or six kids every year are pulled from you and gone to varsity. Yeah. You know, so a, as far as a competitive standpoint, you're sending the best up because yeah. they're using them up there in varsity. Um, but the, the thing that's interesting over a 15-year period is, is you're a nucleus of that program because you're having to bring them along. So, yeah. that, so that like... You know, take example of, you know, we might have a great team, you know, the last year, but this year you might have some new incoming kids on the line in whatever position. It's incumbent upon you to make the transition easy. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's not an, easy, not an easy task. Again, you know, and we've talked about it before, our focus is winning at the varsity level where there's playoffs. We've played teams that, <clears throat> you know, their JV beat us 70 to nothing yeah. one year and their varsity didn't make the playoffs. So. Yeah. So what's the goal of, of what we're doing? You know, our program understands that the, the varsity comes first. And, and also as a JV head coach, that gives me a little leeway to, if I don't win, I shouldn't get fired. You're right. <laughs> You're right? Right, right. So, so when it comes up to, hey, do you want to be the head varsity coach? It's like, I like where I'm at. I like what I'm doing. Yep. And I don't have the pressure of wins and losses. I sure. have the pressure of development, yep. which I think we've done a good job of. And, and what the players understand is when you play JV football at Marine City, it's, it's not easy. It's, that's where we, we actually have longer practices most times in the varsity. It's a little bit tougher. Um, we establish the, you know, the, the discipline, the commitment, the, uh, the groundwork. And so when they get to the varsity, they're able to transition better. They're able to move faster. They're sure. able to do because of the groundwork that's being built. And, right. and, and I've got seven coaches this year, and including myself, five of them are former players. And to me, that, that tells a lot that I must be doing, not just me, but our program must be doing something right to have five guys come back and play, a coach, I should say, who have played in the program and want to, to give back to it. And, right. and to be willing to do it at the JV level not knowing a lot of that glory. they're not, nah, yeah. no, no glory, yeah. and they're not getting paid. Most of them aren't getting paid, and and they're just giving back and want to be a part of it and learn and maybe coach on their own one day. And um, it's it's you know they want to be a part of it, and that's that's important. That's yeah. that's that makes me really proud sure. of what we're doing. And the other thing that I noticed over all the years of say covering the teams is that the team goes as the offensive line goes. Right. You got a sketchy offensive line. Yeah. You're gonna have a hard time picking up first downs and putting points on the board. Yeah, and when you talk about that, you also already mentioned that you, you know usually varsity takes the best four or five guys, mm -hmm. and that's typically your best skill guy. So sure. um, if the O line isn't blocking and you don't have you know the the you know per se the the best running backs that can make those cuts and those moves uh, without blocking, then then you're in trouble. So that's, that's again, where that, that passion for the O-line, the commitment to, to that, that part of it is important, and that develops your backfield better. Yep. Because then the backfield can trust that they're going to block, the holes are going to be there. They can learn and become better backs, even though they might not be as talented as those other guys. They can still learn and trust in their teammates more. Sure. Now, so. um, 
everybody notices that over the last, say, 15, 20 years, the varsity has opened up that wing T. Yeah. But I would say not to the same degree on junior varsity. Right. Right. So again, we talk about that progression. So yep. you know, go back, going back to junior football, where you know when that first established, I first came here. I was one of the junior football coaches when Coach Garcelli started that, and you know, I missed a few years when my kids were not in it and they were younger and stuff like that. I took a few years off of it, but now that my kids are back in the program, you know, I, I, I make sure that we're we're starting out with our base plays. Yep. Um, our, our high school coaches coach it, which is a big deal. And then um, we transition to get a little, we improve a little bit more in eighth grade. And then I'm kind of that, that you know, zone between the eighth grade and the varsity where now we expand a little bit. Sure. But not enough that we're super crazy and we don't understand what we're doing. So I, I try to be that bridge between, or we, I should say, not just me, but I, you know, I call the plays. But we try to be the bridge between, you know, the eighth grade and, and the varsity with, you know, expanding the offense, but not, you know, going nuts. Sort of like a kid riding a bike. First time you ride the bike, you're not popping wheelies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Progression. You get a little better. Right. Yep. You start doing a few more things. Yeah. So we're into, the, say, the mid-2000s, and um, you meet a girl at Marine City. Yeah. And she's now your wife. Yeah, it was actually... <laughs> Not even earlier, you know, it was uh, mainly the second year when I got here. The first year I got here in, in the spring, in the, in the winter, um, Coach Penelope Berman, uh, who's, not, who's not with us anymore, but she, she was the cheerleading coach and Coach Jennifer, and um, she ran a, a fundraiser called the Fashion Show, and, and she's like, hey, hey, can you come help at the fundraiser, and, and I, I got somebody for you to meet. I'm like, okay, you know, I, I'll help, I'll help sure. out, and... and do anything for, for Mrs. Berman, she's a great lady. And, um, you know, so I meet Jennifer and, and um, eventually uh, we got married in, in 2005. I've been married for uh, 17 years and have three kids. And, uh, you know, it's been great. It's, it's been a great combination. She's also a math mind and a uh, substitute teacher in the building. And um, we just do a lot of great things together and, and, and we work together and communicate and have a lot of common goals. and, yeah. and um, you know, she understands, uh, you know, the, the coaching aspect because that takes a lot of time and effort. Sure. Uh, she was a cheerleading coach for quite a, f uh, maybe five or so years. I don't remember exactly, but yep. she was a, the varsity cheerleading coach. And so, um, you know, she gets it. You know, um, it, it's a little tougher when, when the kids were younger and we had to, she had to uh, uh, let go of that, that, that job. But then um, now the you know, kids are older. We can get back into uh, the teaching and stuff. And um, you know, a great person to help me ground my life a little bit from, from being a, a stupid, crazy person. But, uh, you know, she's really helped me to ground myself and, and, and to reach goals that I have always wanted to be. And to be that person and coach that I've always talked about, but maybe haven't always lived that life. Sure. Um, and she's helped me attain that goal to be the person I've wanted to be, you know, a, a, good, a, good, a good coach, a good husband, a good teacher. And, um, and to hold my personal life to a high standard. Okay. And, and um, you know, when, you, when you're younger and you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing and, and um, you know, it takes someone special. You grab your own the to, no, <laughs> not, not that, but it, it takes someone special to make you change your life to, yep. to get it to the way that, that you've always wanted. And, sure. and that's been a, been a big deal. That's, that's important. That's and, good. And, um, you know, we do a lot of great things together. Yep. So. And your children are, give us the ages and the names. Yeah, so um, EJ is 15, freshman in high school, and um, it, it's, been, it's been different, you know, as a coach of, of 20 some years to never have your kid on the team and to coach a team with, with kids that you kind of are part of your family but yeah. not, yeah. and now they actually are, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> it's different, it's different. It's been great, hard worker, um, you know, but it's, it's tough when you get you know, critiqued at home sure, and critiqued on the field and add in that he will be in my classroom in the fall. <laughs> um, a lot it's going to be a lot, lot with yeah. dad and, and, and I'm not an easy guy to be around. I, you know, I grew up in an air, my dad was in the Air Force. He had certain expectations and sure. I've kind of carried those expectations on to do little things and be detailed and and it's not always easy, but hopefully right. you, you do things right and it pays off in the long run. 
Um, so, so EJ is my oldest. Um, my daughter is going into seventh grade, um, and then my youngest Matthew is going into sixth grade. So, okay. Out of the out of the three, <coughs> you see differing personalities. I'm oh sure, yeah, like they're all. Does, right? Yeah, they're all different. They're all um, great. They all have their, their special interests. They all uh, do different things that we're able to share with and, and do together, and, and it's, it's been fun. And, you know, um, my youngest plays baseball. When they lost this year, we, we took a vacation for like 12, 13 days, and it was great. Just get away, drive, and uh, we, we did some things, and it was, it was a great family bonding experience. So. Fun. And one thing I learned last weekend asking you a couple questions was the fact that EJ is going to be your quarterback on JV. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had an injury to our quarterback that was coming back. And, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, Dad, I'll do whatever for the team. And, and you know, um, he's worked hard. We, we, we started to, to take some snaps in the winter just in case um, he had to do that position. And, sure. um, you know, obviously – being at home with him and watching film and, and having conversations, you know, you maybe aren't supposed to, but you can carry on yeah. that part of coaching in different aspects where you, if you don't live with the other people, then you don't, sure. you aren't able to, you know, he's watching film while eating lunch and, and mention something or we're at, we're eating dinner or we're driving and it's, hey, what'd you think about this play or, or how did you do in this part or position or this can get better? Just little things that you can talk about that you can't. And so that sure. makes it easier, but it won't be if right. the performance doesn't go the way that you want yeah. it to go. And, and, and I've got to ease up, you know, with that and find, you know, keep that fine line of, of, you know, there are still expectations, but, sure. but, you know, we've got to, at the end of the day, at least still my exactly, son. Yeah, exactly. So. so when do you think you decided to be a coach and teacher? Um, teaching, my mom was a teacher. Okay. So in high school, I kind of got that idea and, and I can really have a pretty good memory of, I remember I was in study hall, uh, back in high school and you know, I love math and I was really good at math and other kids were like really struggling and I'm like, Hey, I can help you out. And so that right there was the spark where I started to help other kids when I was in high school. And I'm like, man, I like this. I like helping kids out. I like when they, they understand it. And I'm like, man, this might be something that I might want to do, want to sure. go into. And my mother being a teacher, I could see summers off. I get the idea of things that you can and can't do. She would be up till 1 a.m. grading papers. Sure. And I said, I'm not ever doing that. So, <laughs> right. you know, you learn, you learn some early on, I learned the positive and the negative aspects. So sure. when I went to Tech, Michigan Tech, I, I had two options, I wanna do something with numbers. So I was either gonna be an accountant or gonna be a, a teacher. And I took one accounting class and saw how boring that would be. And I love numbers, but you don't get to talk to people. Sure. And, and once I started playing football, I knew football always had to be a part of my life. Okay. I knew that I loved it, I wanted to be around it. And if I couldn't play it, which after college, I knew I wasn't going to anymore, I wanted to coach it. And I wanted it to always be a part of my life. And so. Um, those two things are things that I had to wanted wanted to put together. Okay. Now so. I heard you talk about your mentor in the UP as far as the coach yep. up there, Coach Bob. Obviously, anybody yep. else that's mentors of yours? Um, you, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, Coach Garcelli, Coach Glodich, Coach Letson have all all been a part of everything. That um, you know, they have all given me a little piece sure. um, to carry on with. You know, even though I, I'm not the head coach of the program. Being the JV head coach, I still deal with a lot of the ins and outs stuff. I try to take care of a lot of the things so they don't get to the top of the program. So I've learned from all of those guys of, you know, what things that to help me out with, you know, from practice plans to, um, you know, how to handle parents to, sure. to um, you know, dealing with ha handling kids and talking to kids and, and you know, all those different things are things that, you know, I've done in my life that um, have really helped me. I think I've mentioned, I think I mentioned most of the people that have been important. Okay. I, obviously, if I forget yeah, someone, no. I, I, I apologize, <laughs> but I, those are the majority of the people sport-wise. Um, you know, we had, we had a coach that was just with us, Coach McPherson, that he brought another different aspect of, of my life. Um, you know, to the next level where, you know, I do sprints in practice that I've never done before. 
Um, kids, kids respect that. You know, you, you know, they respect that even though they're running, hey, I'm running with them. You know, Coach Mack did that or something. And, and, and a little more of the positiveness. You know, sometimes as a coach, you know, you focus too much on negatives when a play doesn't go well sure. and not enough on the positives. Um, and, I, and I think he helped me out a little bit with seeing a little more of that side. Um, because, you know, you have limited time, so you feel the pressure of, you know, I have limited time to run limited plays, and, and if I always focus on the positives and how do we improve, but we've got we've to see both sides of that, you know, sure. and we've got to express, you know, we are doing great things, but let's, let's get this part better. Sure. Um, so. I had a discussion with a few different people about the fact of, like, huddle and how that program helps coach and helps teach children how to change what they're doing on the field. So you, from a offensive or defensive standpoint, you can take and dissect a play, correct? Yep, and what's great, I'm glad you brought that up because one thing that I've learned from my high school experiences is I have brought to this program that I don't want them to have regrets because when I played high school in Gwynn, uh, my best record, our best record was six and three, and we missed the playoffs because it was based on playoff points at yep. the time by like l less than a point or two. Uh, I've yeah. never played in a playoff game. So when these guys play for Marine City and every year they're in the playoffs, they take that for granted sometimes. Yes. And I make sure uh, and whenever I get a chance to work with kids and whether it's JV and in varsity when they make the playoffs that uh, my season's over and then I go up to the varsity whenever I can to understand it's earned and, sure. and, and what it's like to not make the playoffs is not fun and, right. and so when I reflect on my high school experiences with film and, and, and the film sessions that I had were not what I would consider great development and I'm not trying to put a slap in the face to any of my high school coaches. No, different areas too, though. Different right? areas yeah. and generations. Yeah. And um, I have learned from those experiences, and I take that experience to what I do now. And so we make sure we introduce huddle. We make sure to go through huddle. And, and, and wow, this group I have this year is putting a lot of time into huddle already. Okay. And so they're, they're grasping it. They're understanding the concept, the willingness to learn. And, you know, back then we didn't have devices on her. We didn't have a phone right. where we could watch how to, we, we had to, to watch it on a VHS tape right. Grainy. and only the coach had it. Right. Even in college, when I played college football, we'd have to go to the practice facility to watch it. and watch film on our own. And we didn't really know what to do with it or how to do it or, or what to do. And um, just, I've learned so much over the years of the importance of huddle and, and how that changes. And these kids have it at their hand, their phone, anytime right. they want to watch it. One of these days I'm going to so. have to do a segment on that, I guess, just because yeah. I've seen it and help and do the, the film at the end of the year, and it's just amazing. Uh, the proverbial scenario I always bring up is, is uh, your halfback runs for a 62-yard touchdown, and yes, you're excited about that, but you as the coach might look at it and go, these two guys over here, they didn't block worth a darn. Right. <laughs> you know, and, so, and when you talk about that in O-line, and, and Coach Bob and I are in the same boat, we'll watch every play six times right. to, watch, to watch it overall. Right. We'll watch the center, the right guard, left guard. We, we go through yeah. all of it. You have to go individually, player by player, step by step, slow-mo, yeah. to truly understand footwork, technique, assignment, right. and to see why the play succeeded, why it didn't succeed, and you know, and then and then you have a, a running backs coach that now watches the running backs and critiques them. So yeah. um, it's film. Film can, is amazing, yes. but man, it's a time commitment. It's a oh, time sure. commitment, and but you have to do it to get good because that's how you that's how you coach. Right. You you improve play by doing that, and, and and then you hope the kids get a chance to watch on their own. You get to watch some together as a team. Um, and, and, but that development is there and can be there by that learning phase. Yeah, I've right. often said too that high school football, high school coaches in general don't do it for the money because if you took the amount of oh. money you're getting and divided by the hours. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> you know, the love and passion yeah. and, and the willingness to, to improve, to make these kids understand a concept that it's not just about winning, it's about a phase of life to get better. Right. To put forth time and effort, pay attention to detail, 
you know, get good at things. And then hopefully in your personal life, when you go on from, from sports, you, you use those same traits yeah. to, to, to get a job and, and a family and a career and, and those things. But, but going back to that, no, it's, it, I don't, it's, it's not the money. It's I do it for the fun of the game, the compassion, the, the competition, right. uh, being around great positive people. The fact that we can influence uh, students and, and young people and help them to do great things. That's, that's, that's the reason that I, I The example it. that I used when talking to Chief Heslop was that when all is said and done, the most important thing is to make better humans right. so that they don't have to deal with Chief Heslop well. and his line <laughs> of work, right? Right. It's, <laughs> it's helpful to have the chief of police on the football staff to know that... Hey, you, you've got someone here watching over you, what you do on and off the field. Right. So It's all about respect yeah. and yeah, teaching oh yeah. repetition and learning yeah. and being a good citizen as well. Correct. Yeah. Right. Being good people. Yep. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you being here. Okay. Um, I look forward to seeing you at the field uh, yep. two, no, a week and a half from now on a yeah. Thursday night. So we will uh, yeah. see you next time on, uh, in the zone. If uh, anybody needs or wants to propose somebody else to be on the show, Cell phone number's up there, 586-707-5811. And until next time, we'll see you on the football field. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yep. Appreciate it.